Yep, Darius Britt here. If you're new around here, we make films and we talk about how we made them. Well, welcome to my third shooting start to finish video. We're gonna be breaking down how I shot my short film, Pandemic. If you haven't seen it yet, check it out, link below and at the end of the video. Yes, I made this in quarantine. Yes, I shot everything myself. Here's a little context behind this project. My motivation for making the film. I wanted to capture what it feels like to experience this crazy pandemic. It's not so much about telling a story as it is about capturing a feeling. I stepped away from a cause effect relationship and storytelling in favor of a more lyrical approach. It seemed appropriate. I don't know about you, but when I think back on this pandemic, I may not remember everything that happened, but I will remember how it made me feel. Side note, I don't normally look homeless. I grew this out for the film. Here, I used a GH4, recorded in ProRes Lite with the Atomos Ninja V. Tascam DR60D Mark II for audio, Rode Video Mic NTG and Rode Wireless Go for wireless booming, and an iFootage monopod. This setup is all about convenience and speed. Shooting solo was very exhausting and I want to be able to move fast. The Atomos recorder shines here for the touch screen and easy navigation. And of course the anamorphic de-squeeze function. Plus I can record and playback media directly from the monitor without having to fart around with the camera. Huge time saver. I shot anamorphic on a 50 mil and a 35. This Surrey 35 is not out yet, more on this later. I used Black Promise filters on almost every shot to take that digital edge off. I used an eighth and a quarter, mostly the quarter. Here's a shot with no pro mist, and here's that same shot with a quarter black pro mist. Much creamier, smoother, takes that digital edge off, and we get the beautiful blooming in the highlights. Scene one. Here I wanted to take the usual wake up in bed cliche and turn it on its head. Instead of waking up to an alarm clock, he wakes up to nature's call and makes ridiculous noises. Sure, it's a serious film, but I see no reason why I can't have a little fun. One, it's relatable. Two, we can clearly see he's alone by the way he's going about peeing, door open, loud noises, and whatnot. And three, since I can't move the camera much being that I'm in the shots, then I want to incorporate as much blocking as possible to keep things dynamic and visually interesting. I went with central framing here because I love how the placement of these doors mirror each other. These doors also give the shot a lot of depth. And I don't have autofocus, so I set the focus to these doors here. I kind of like the idea that ties this out of focus creature in the background snoring and he walks into focus to use the bathroom. I use the Siri 35 at F4 here in my camera settings for those who care. I didn't use vlog, way too noisy, just went with a custom setup. I had to back the camera up 14 feet away from the bed to get the shot. This is the scene with no lighting. That bathroom light is just hideous bounced a Yakoi light off the bathroom wall, light number two on the bed for some fill, and that's how I lit the shot. I knew I wanted my titling somewhere on the door, so the placement was critical. I needed the door to land in the exact same spot every single time, so I turned a weight into a doorstop. Problem solved. Scene number two. Quarantine's a funny thing. We're all at home, a place that we're very intimately familiar with, yet everything still feels weird. I wanted to capture a little of that feeling with the framing. I'm gonna shoot this whole scene off the medicine cabinet mirror. Let's shoot a typical scene in a new way. And also personal bias, I love shooting off mirrors. I broke the frame up into equal thirds using the mirror. The robe is dead center since it's the focus of the scene. This is the scene with no lighting. I open the curtains in the bedroom to give me some of that side lighting. Set a couple of Yakoi lights down to simulate sun bouncing off the floor. Prop the robe up on a laundry basket because it was sitting too low in the frame. Gave myself some marks to hit. Boom, just outside the bottom of frame. 35 mil lens at f2.8. Boom, we've arrived. Coffee scene. Fun fact, Kate and I recorded ourselves at completely different times. This was not a recorded Zoom call. This was a move to save time, but in hindsight, I wish I had actually taken the time to do a recorded Zoom call with her because it just doesn't have that texture, that kind of texture you can only get by having actors play off each other. I bounced a Yakoi light off the mirror for this shot, shot it with the Siri 35. At around five o'clock, sunlight comes through the western side of that back bathroom window. Perfect time to shoot. The light bounces off the tub and just illuminates the bathroom, doing most of the work for me. I added to it with a couple of Yakoi light sticks, and that's how I lit the scene shot it with the 35. I shot the first kitchen scene on a different day at about 7.30 in the morning. Sunlight comes through the south facing window, bounces off the floor right into the kitchen, giving me a nice warm key for the bacon scene. I added a Yakoi light set to tungsten to simulate a stove light and that's it. If we look at false color, I'm actually fairly underexposed. Most of me is coming in at around 10 to 20 IRE, but it looks good in camera, so who cares? I used the 35 mil, a third of a stop past 2.8. Here are my camera settings for those who care. No artificial lighting in this shot. 35 mil set to f2.8 to get the out of focus background. All natural lighting here, I just used the sunlight bouncing off nearby shutters. I love how awkward the television sits in the frame, again looking at things in a slightly different way. Travis and I rehearsed this scene for about 20 minutes before recording a live Zoom call for an hour. This is my favorite shot in the entire movie despite the fact that I hate the framing. I'm not quite center framed, I'm not occupying a third, but still the shot kind of works in an odd way. I love how you can see the highlights blooming here, that's from that quarter pro mist. I severely underexposed on purpose for dramatic effect. To me, this is one of the pivotal scenes to show the isolation. Although the shot is super dark, the sunlight coming from these garage door windows gives me the perfect perfect rim light, which gives me that beautiful separation, allowing the subject to really pop out from the background. And that's why I love this shot. I didn't use any artificial lighting for this scene. I just found the perfect time of day to shoot it. Had I shot this scene three hours earlier, it would have looked like this. Eh, it's okay. Just nowhere near as good as this. 
That's why time of day and planning is so important. This is how far the camera was to get the shot. I used the Siri 35 mil. I'm a third of a stop past F2. I usually don't like to go that low on this lens because you lose sharpness, but since the scene is so dark, it doesn't matter. These are my camera settings for those who care. Fun fact, this was the first scene I shot of the entire movie. I bounced a Yokoyi light off a nearby wall to get a little more English on the bottles. For the close-up shot, I switched to the Siri 50 mil. The Yokoi light next to camera is giving me this catch light in my eyes right here. It's also giving me some fill. I don't want a high contrast ratio in the close-up because to me, you gotta be able to see into those eyes. The eyes are the window to the soul. That's where the story is being told. This is also why I always try to make sure and have a catch light in a close-up if possible. I'm actually sitting about four feet away from the bar, unlike the previous shot. This is called a cheat. If I were sitting at the actual bar, you wouldn't be able to see the bottle and the TV mount in the background. The only way for me to get these details in the shot is for me to scoot closer to camera. I shot this bar scene next during golden hour. I'm on the Siri 35 and I'm just barely skimming the top of the bar to get as much glare off that bar as possible to get this shot. Beautiful highlight bloomage over my head from the quarter pro mist. These were my camera settings. I'm a third of a stop below F2.8 to get the background out of focus. Focused on the phone here because from a story standpoint, it's the source of all the invading information and overwhelm. This was the very last scene I shot of the movie. Kate and I rehearsed over the phone for 30 minutes before hopping on an hour and a half long Zoom recording. About 30% of the scene was improv. I gave myself some fill light by bouncing a Yakoi light off the closet wall. Kate was lit by a practical incandescent light in her bathroom. For all the video calls, I used the real audio from the recording and just cleaned it up in post. Fun fact, of the entire movie, I had the most trouble acting in this scene, and I still to this day don't know why. The parking lot scene was the second to last scene I shot of the entire movie. Fun fact, I reshot this scene two times. The whole point of shooting this scene was to capture that moment everyone goes through when you know you have to put on a mask before going into a store. Super, super weird. I replaced the audio in the entire scene because of this. The car was actually still running and the door was open. It was the only way I could get the composition I wanted. On top of all the bounced sunlight coming from the other side of the car, I had an additional Yukoi light to add for Phil because, well, <laughs> I have dark skin and it absorbs a ton of light. I used the Siri 50mm instead of the 35 in this shot because I want the lens compression. There's that quarter black pro mist. I threw on ND16 on the lens so that I can open up the lens to a third of a stop past F2. That's how I got the shallow depth of field outside the window. True story, the shot I ended up using is the one I missed focus on because the performance was the best. Can't win them all. These are my camera settings. Oh, you can't see them because of all the glare. This is why we use ultra bright external monitors outdoors. Sun glare is annoying. This is the fridge shot without lighting. Kinda lame. Let's add some lights. Yokoi light from the far side mimicking sunlight coming from the back sliding glass door. Let's use an aperture 120D as a soft fill light. We'll dim it down to 50%. Boom the shot from overhead. Custom set the color temperature to 49,000 Kelvin, halfway between daylight and tungsten. <sighs> That's, that's a little better. I'm using the Surrey 50 mil here, a third of a stop past F2.8. The camera's about nine feet away, catching a little bit of this wall in the shot to add depth. The famous slash infamous hand washing scene. Yes, I read the comments. You guys were split right down the middle on this one. Kind of funny. First things first, unplug the fridge. I don't want to have to fully a minute's worth of hand washing. I use the Surrey 35 mil and I hug the countertop as close as I can so I can catch the glare and the reflections coming off the countertop. Here's that scene without the lighting. It just looks stupid, has like zero impact. The eye doesn't know where to look. The hands are not the brightest thing in the frame. Actually, that refrigerator behind them is, which makes the fridge kind of distracting because it's so bright. Also the water, which is a big part of the scene, just blends in with everything else. Sound is gonna be critical because again, I don't wanna have to foley anything in here. So I'm close miking my hands. Aperture 120D on the far side of the action. I crank the ballast all the way up to the max, 100%, making the 120D super bright so that I can stop my lens down to about F5.6. This way I can knock down the exposure on the back fridge here because ultimately I want my hands to be the brightest thing in the frame. And if they're the only thing under that big bright light, they will be. Move to paper towel rack right in the middle of the shot just to dirty it up a bit so it feels lived in. Also by placing the light on the far side, it's gonna backlight that water, making it glow. It's gonna be cinematic beautifulness. These were my camera settings, and boom, ready to go. Swapped over to the 50 mil for the close up water dripping shot. For the macro shot of the faucet, I threw a Voigtlander 42.5 mil lens on. This is not an anamorphic lens, it's spherical, so it's gonna have a very different feel from the rest of the footage, but I think it's appropriate given what I'm shooting. I want this shot to feel otherworldly like you've stepped into another dimension, because this is sort of a turning point in the story. I've also got some beautiful sound design ideas in mind. I flagged off the surrounding light with moving blankets, blasted two Yukoyi lights at max power on either side of the faucet, and then got as close as I could with the Voigtlander. I wanted to make this faucet feel like an alien spaceship. 
Again, taking something very common, but filming it in an extraordinary way. The constant washing of the hands is kind of oppressive, and I wanted this dripping faucet to feel like it's bearing down on you. I shot it at F11. These were my camera settings. I knew this hand washing scene would be polarizing, but at the end of the day, if you want to make memorable work, sometimes you just have to take risks. I wanted to capture the truth of this scene as honestly as I could, and that required giving it some time and some room to breathe. Watching Ty wash his hands for as long as he did, the way he did says a lot about his character, in a way that words really can't describe. For the television scene, again, I wanted to communicate this sense of overwhelm, like he's just being enveloped by information. I've always seen this scene sort of playing out as a silhouette against a television. To get the shot, I stuck the camera on a monopod about 10 feet away on the 50 millimeter anamorphic lens, set a step still in front of the TV so I could step into the shot. For the lens flaring, I mounted a light just outside of frame beaming the lens. I flared the lens as much as possible for this sequence because, again, it's another visual way to communicate overwhelm. He just can't escape the television, even its light wraps around him. For the close-up shots in front of the television, I went with the Surrey 35 because the flaring is much smoother. There's a gradual roll off. I get the effect I want without it being too overbearing. While we're talking about the 35 mil, full disclosure, Surrey sent me their new 35 mil 13X anamorphic. I did not pay for it. Me shooting a film with it is my way of breaking it in and kicking it around. Being a big fan of the 50 mil, I had high expectations for the 35 and I wasn't disappointed. So far, I have thoroughly enjoyed using this lens and it renders a good image. I shot 80% of pandemic with it. The proof is in the footage. It also comes with custom lens gears. That was one of my gripes about the 50. Lens gears do fit very well. They also stand up to heat. Like the 50, the 35 is built very nicely. Nice fit and finish. The very first thing I noticed about the 35 is the flaring characteristics. It's much more like a veil, more organic, more subdued. Suray is running an Indiegogo campaign on this bad boy as we speak. If you want to get your paws on this lens, then you should check it out, man. I'll leave a link to their campaign below in the description section. P.S. I've really enjoyed using these lenses in Surrey. If you're watching, you guys should definitely make an entire set of these. Used a light bar here. Shot this scene with the Surrey 50 anamorphic at 60 frames a second. This is without the light. This is with the light. Think of it as sunlight bouncing off the ground. Shot this scene with the Surrey 50. For those of you who follow me, you know I love shooting through doorways. Here I'm using the doorway to convey a trapped feeling. I barely has any room in the frame to breathe. Looks kind of uncomfortable. Aside from taking advantage of the natural lighting coming through the window, I tossed a light stick on the floor to simulate bounce sunlight. And as you guessed, in order to get this shot, the camera was quite a ways away. Everyone loves a golden hour shot. I took this on the Siri 35. Shot this with the Siri 50 at 50 frames a second. Again, the shot's a little soft because the sensor windows in in order to do high frame rates. I'm using two Yukoi light sticks for this shot. I've got one down by the pedals bouncing up to give me some separation. And I've got the other right here just outside of frame. The lighting scheme doesn't make much sense in this scene. But I don't care because one, it looks good. And two, it's supposed to be this guy's subjective experience anyways. Kind of frees me up to do whatever I feel like doing. Shot this at 60 frames a second with the Siri 50. Nothing communicates stress like an upside down shot. In order to get that soft lighting, I've got two Yukoi light sticks over here. I could have just opened a window and used sunlight, but that would have poured light everywhere. I get more control this way. For the back window shot here, I was on the Siri 50 mil. Did I mention how much I love shooting reflections? From the second I thought of this short, this was one of the images that stuck out in my mind. Seeing somebody mask up in a reflection. In case you haven't noticed, SUVs are kind of tall. I had to stand on a chair to get high enough for the framing that I was looking for. This, my friend, is another cheat shot. Recorded the shots at the airport with my cell phone. It's a Google Pixel 3. Long story short, I was traveling for family business and thought, hey, why don't I try the slow-mo out on this phone? I've never used it before. Took some sample shots. Surprise, surprise, it looked better than I thought. Next thing I know, I'm recording some snippets for the short. Found a nice ledge with lots of windows. Set my phone down, framed up a shot, and off we go. For the macro-like shots of the phone in the eyes, I used the Voigtlander Nocton 25mm. This lens allows me to get stupid close to subjects. I'm talking you can focus on something like two inches away from the lens. I was lit by the glow from the phone and nothing else. Shot everything at f2.8. For all the news shots, I just waved my phone in front of the lens at a frenetic pace. To get this effect, I recorded myself watching a video called Red Wormhole on YouTube. This shot was a visual way to represent falling down the information rabbit hole. The backyard sequence. Everything in this sequence is one big journey towards the feeling of overwhelm. Again, I want to tell this story in a more lyrical way, not so straightforward. It's more about the emotions. It's about how these visuals make you feel. I shot everything on the Siri 35. This close-up was the only thing I shot on the Siri 50. Shot everything at 60 frames a second slow motion. When you see a shot of water leaking out the side of a faucet, doesn't it make you feel something? It makes me feel uneasy. It shouldn't be leaking. Combine this with sound design and you have an ordinary shot that has a double meaning. Leaking water running down the side of a wall? That's not right. Normally you wouldn't give a small detail like this so much attention, but I want to film ordinary things in an extraordinary way. Because of this pandemic, we're all seeing the world a little differently. Nothing feels right. The entire sequence builds up to this moment right here. An overwatered rose bush. It's one big metaphor for overwhelm. 
too much of a good thing. Information is great, but too much of it can be emotionally crippling. And also, visually speaking, this shot makes me feel uncomfortable. I don't enjoy watching a plant get overwatered. Definitely reinforces the tone I'm going for. The coffee mug scene. I filmed this scene over two different times of day. The actual glass dropping and the close-ups were filmed at 3 p.m., but I filmed the actual wide shot at 7.30 in the morning. That's when sunlight pokes through the south-facing windows. I'm not using any additional lights in this shot. That's all the sun and perfect timing. Notice the nice blooming in the highlights from that quarter pro mist. I'm using two lights in the close-up. One light stick in the kitchen, blasting at the microwave, bringing up the general ambience of the cabinets. It's just to give me a little more separation from the background, otherwise it would be way too dark back there. And I've got a 120D on a Fresnel lens blasting through the sliding glass door at 75%. This light is giving me more contrast between the left and right side of my face. I'm going for an edgy mood here. And also that quarter pro mist making those highlights bloom. I didn't break any mugs when I filmed the close-ups and I just poured the coffee in a bowl. I filmed all the coffee spilling goodness at 60 frames a second. Notice the shot before lighting. Eh, nothing special. After lighting, we can see further into the cup and we've got a little magic happening right here. That's the reflection from the Yokoyi light in the coffee. And we hop back on the 35 for the coffee spill and mug break. I'm hugging the ground with my framing as much as I can to catch the outside glare reflecting off the tile floor. I did four takes of that shot, broke all four mugs. For the final scene, Kate and I recorded ourselves at separate times. I used the actual audio from the recordings, cleaned it up in post. Kate used two different lighting setups. At the moment, I don't recall what they were. I blacked out my window with moving blankets and eight clamps. I used the actual lamp in the room and filled my face in with some fill light from the phone. Check out my kit profile. I'll link it in the description section. It's got a list of all the gear I currently use. I'm still working on that pro sound audio course for you guys. I'll leave a link to an email sign up below. I used Artless Music for the short film and this BTS video. I hope me sharing this short film and my process with you is proven enough that circumstances don't really matter. There is no excuse to not make something. It's all about using what you get because at the end of the day, your skills are more important anyways. Get your knowledge up. Keep learning. Thank you for watching. Keep hustling and deeper down.